Optimism is like red wine. A glass a day is good for you, but a bottle a day can be hazardous. How you envision your future. If that's the way, you probably suffer from excessive optimism. We underestimate our likelihood of suffering from cancer or being in a car accident. However, we overestimate our longevity, our career prospects, or just picture ourselves in a romantic sunset cruise. In short, we are more optimistic than realistic, but we are oblivious to the fact. Take marriage, for example. In the Western world, divorce rates are about 40%. That means that out of five married couples, two will end up splitting their assets. But when you ask newlyweds about their own likelihood of divorce, they estimate it at 0%. Optimists are not less likely to divorce, but they are more likely to remarry. Most of us perceive our abilities above average. Well, this is statistically impossible. We can't all be better than everyone else. But if we think we're better than the other guy, then we believe we're more likely to get that promotion or to remain married because we are more social and more interesting. The optimism bias has been observed in many different countries. It's a global phenomenon. The question is, is it good for us? Some people say the secret to happiness is low expectations. If we don't expect greatness, we're not going to be disappointed when good things don't happen and we'll be pleasantly surprised when they do. It's a good theory, but it turns out to be wrong for three reasons. People with high expectations always feel better. The psychologist Margaret Marshall and John Brown studied students with high and low expectations. They found out that when people with high expectations succeed, they attribute their success to their own traits. But when they fail, it's not because they're dumb, it's because the exam just happened to be unfair. People with low expectations do the opposite. Regardless of the outcome, the pure act of anticipation makes us happy. The behavioral economist George Lewenstein asked students in his own university to imagine getting a passionate kiss from a celebrity. Then he asked, how much are you willing to pay to get the kiss from the celebrity if the kiss would be delivered immediately? In three hours? In 24 hours? In three days? In one year? Or 10 years? The students were willing to pay the most to get the kiss in three days. They were willing to pay extra in order to wait. But they weren't willing to wait a year or 10 years. Because if you get the kiss now, it's over and done with. But a kiss in three days allows the excitement of anticipation. This is, by the way, the reason why people prefer Friday, a day of work, to Sunday, which is a day of pleasure. Friday brings with it the anticipation of the weekend ahead. On Sunday, the only thing you can look forward to is the work week. Expectation improves the quality of our lives. Control experiments have shown that optimism is not only related to success, it leads to success. So what is the best approach? The key is knowledge. If you're pessimistic and believe you cannot fly, that you are less likely to even try or less likely to succeed because expectation fuel action. If you jump blindly, you may find yourself crushing to the ground. However, if you are optimistic, believe you can fly, but also use a parachute just in case, you'll soar high and encounter new experiments, even if things don't quite work out the way you expected.